there's like a pen that I use. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, CCC, aka Dot, uh, my friends, and uh, special thanks to uh, Honor Mayor Jeremy Singson Golart. Uh, thank you for, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you for gracing this event. And now I want to welcome you again to the EVO uh, exhibition. Now, what does EVO stand for? EVO stands for evolution. The art that you see over there is my art as it evolves and progresses into the style that it is today. Uh, my art didn't come in one day. It's all, um, it's all hard work, time, and energy. And I want to take you back uh, to my humble beginnings and to present day to tell you how I got here. So I started doing art uh, as soon as I picked up a pencil. When I was a baby, I was drawing on paper and I was drawing on the walls um, without permission. <laughs> My parents didn't know, but thankfully they allowed me. <laughs> and um, during my grade school years, uh, I had this really nice art teacher, uh, Miss Cecil, 
I think she's watching right now. Uh, so, Miss Cecil, if you're watching, hello. Thank you for teaching me the art, uh, the basics of art. Um, and I think that Miss Cecil is also the teacher of uh, well, Governor Ryan. Yes. <laughs> so, a uh, very small world. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, let's move on. a few years later when I was 11. I started drawing my character named Zach. Um, Zach came from the word Zechariah, which is my real name. I'm not sure if uh, you people know that, but now you know. My real name is Zechariah. So my parents saw me drawing one day, and they were astonished, like, Wow, my son is good. Wow. <laughs> wow, he's a good artist. <laughs> So he collaborated with me and we created the advocacy uh, Project Zach. Project Zach is an art advocacy where we sold shirts online. And um, with my design and my mom's positive quotes. Um, so we sold the shirts online and all the money that we get is given to a charity. Not only charity but also to artists who need them from uh, aspiring artists to uh, veteran artist, artists who need uh, money. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I cannot give something that I don't have, so I kept practicing, practicing, but I didn't do the right kind of practice. And so, until I turned 13, I realized that I needed to take art seriously. I wanted to help people, and I wanted to make a living off of something that I'm passionate about. So, I studied from international artists online, like uh, Ethan Becker, Joe Jazza, Cynic, Simorn. And I learned how they do their shapes, their colors, how they frame their artwork, and uh, more. And not only that, but I met artist friends along the way, and we appreciated each other's arts, and I cr uh, criticized their arts as well. Not criticized, I gave critiques, that's the right word. Now I want each and every one of you to know that critiques are not a bad thing. I want you to treat critiques as a tool to learn. Because when I receive critiques, I am happy to receive them. Critiques are something that people see that you don't. If you see what people don't see, you will know your mistakes and you can go from there. But not all critiques are good. There's constructive criticism, which will show you how to fix your art or anything that you're doing. And then there's criticism, or just hate. But either way, I want you to treat criticism with respect. Okay. <laughs> and now we're here today, I'm now 16, and uh, in tonight's event, all the money that's earned will be given to uh, the local youth. I am very happy that um, what I'm doing, the things that I'm passionate of doing, is still helping people during the pandemic. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here today. And uh, yeah, let's move to the subject of art even more. Uh, I heard the local store had its own kind of special art, right? It's called vegan pottery. How many of you heard of uh, vegan pottery? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's been practiced for generations and generations. But I'm sad to say that it seems to be losing popularity. So. Uh, my goal here in the Lucas store is to incorporate uh, my modern art with their uh, traditional art so it, so it can appeal to all markets of all ages and it could also keep our cultural identity alive as well. Uh, now, I believe cultural identity is important because, again, it's a part of us. So we should be proud of it. We should take care of our cultural identity. So, as an artist, I want each and every one of you, I encourage each and every one of you, to practice your own kind of art. You see, uh, art is not just about drawing. <laughs> There's different kinds of art. There's performing arts, like, you know, the drama that you see on TV, the uh, love romantic comedies. <laughs> that's, that's a kind of art. Um, there's also uh, musical arts, like, like piano. And there's also martial arts. <laughs> yeah, the art of fighting, yeah. Now, you can practice your own kind of art because, again, there's multiple benefits for developing your own kind of art. Art uh, can empower you. It can make you feel more confident. 
it's not only just a hobby, even though that's a valid reason to practice art. Um, and yeah, it inspires people to do the same for you. Like, if people see why you're doing art, then it should inspire others to do the same uh, kind of art. Yeah, for that reason. So, I want each and every one of you to practice art, to empower yourselves and empower society. Okay, thank you very much. Right now, I'm going to be talking about NFTs. Have you guys heard of NFTs? Non fungible tokens? Okay, so. It's something new. So. Yeah, it's something new. So, I don't really expect anyone to know this yet. That's why I'm going to be talking about it right now. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Alright, so what is an NFT or a non-fungible token? Next slide. Before anything else, I want you to know the definition of fungible. Fungible means replaceable. It's something that is interchangeable and, you know, it's something that can be, um, that has the same value as others. So basically, if I have 1,000 pesos and you give me, I give you 1,000 pesos and you give me 1,000 pesos. It's like the same value. Well, I don't know what happened. You know, nobody gained profit because you know, they're the same. Oh, next slide. So for example, I gave, I give you a book and you give me the same book. Are I exchange them by them for no reason? It's like, you know, it's like the same book. Pero, next slide. What if the author book has the signature of the author? What if the other book used to be owned by the author itself? Then, of course, that book will be more valuable than, than the um, So That's just a picture of a tweet, right? But that was made into an NFT. That screenshot was made into an NFT. And it was sold for $2.9 million. You screenshot that? Two point nine million dollars. It's owned. That NFT is owned by the Twitter CEO, and what he did to the earnings, to the to the fundraising, to the fundraiser, he just donated it to um, but it's for uh, for people who are affected by COVID nineteen. Next slide. Okay, so a while ago this morning after classes, I made strong as as a gift. His first NFT. It's now listed in that QR code right there. Wow. And, wow. and yeah, we're accepting, we're accepting uh, buyers. <laughs> Worldwide. And, yeah, actually, um, this is this NFT. All the proceeds will go to you know a charitable cause. Paul, uh, uh, the mayor of Kalayan in Okasur, and we have 32 municipalities and two cities. Component city there in the Nokosur at siya po ang one of the mayors natin. Mayor siya ng Hawaiian, Hawaiian Ilocosur. So, um, younger sister of Manong Chavit, of course, and uh, Vice Gov, Jerry Simpson, what it is natin, and of course, of Congressman uh, Bonito Simpson. Diba? May we call on Mayor Jeremy! Thank you, Mom Jerry. Strong congratulations. Thank you. You know when I saw this uh, this uh, this exhibit of yours, I I was so amazed and more amazed now that it is digitally uh, produced by you, right? So. When I was young, I knew how to draw. But when I got older, I forgot to draw. <laughs> so I, I used to I used to design clothes too, my clothes. In that kabahet, wala lahat yung mga artistic abilities ko when I was young. So treasure this uh, this ability that you have. Treasure this art that you have. And uh, it's so amazing. Yeah, everything that I see that you have done is so amazing. And I, and I look forward to 
uh, having it explained to us how you were able to produce this kind of art. Diba? And, uh, and the uh, cause that you were promoting, which is for the youth, uh, is also very important and uh, worthy of your talent. Very worthy of the, your talent. And I'm sure you will be uh, sharing this talent also to a lot of people and I hope they get inspired by your uh, artwork and do the same in their community. So I, uh, I just want to look at the, uh, the things that Z uh, Strong had created and uh, artists from, uh, from abroad, from, yeah, I just don't ask me their names, I know, I have it in my mind but I cannot, I, I forgot the names. Pero this can be internationally uh, sold or you may you may be you may be internationally acclaimed someday. So I'm congratulating you now. Okay. So uh, thank you for asking me to uh, uh, speak a little. Uh, spotlight is on strong. Okay today.
the gym. Hello. Thank you. Back, turn. Okay, turn around. That's it.